Hello everyone, welcome to Dixie Bell's Facebook page. My name is Tracy Bellion and I am the owner and um, artist at Tracy's Fancy and I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company. Um, I am here live on their page every single Wednesday night at seven o'clock central time. I'm coming to you from San Antonio, Texas and I'm out here in my workshop painting whatever project is going on at the time in my workshop, which is usually about 10, you know, okay, not 10, six things maybe, six things I have going on out here at once. So uh, this is what we're gonna work on tonight. Hello, Lisa and Nancy, thanks y'all for coming on and thanks for saying hello, Melissa. Hi, hon. Uh, Nina, hi, sunshine, how are you doing? Good to see you. Sue, hi, honey. Hey, Sue, I saw that you uh, asked about my eye patch. That actually was a picture from last week. Um, so it's not current, but uh, yeah, I did two live videos with that eye patch on my face. Last week. Thank goodness I did not have my live here last Wednesday. I missed you guys last Wednesday night, but we were, you know, having a baby in our family. So I, I had I had other things going on. Um, hello, Debbie. Dixie, Dixie Bell's here as well. Hi, Jerry. Um, listen, this is how we do it here on the Dixie Bell page. When you are when you sign on, you say hello. If you see your friends, you can say hello. If you have questions, you ask them. We would love to know where you're watching from. Uh, we would love to know if you have any questions at all about Dixie Bell Paint, or if you're new to Dixie Bell Paint. Uh, if you are a retailer that's watching one of our amazing Dixie Bell retailers, please say hello and let people know where your shop is. That way, if they're looking for a store that's near them, they can locate you. Um, and anyone that is willing to push that share button, I would love for you to do that because we're taking it down to super, super simple basics tonight, which means anyone can do this. This is for anyone. All right. Uh, hi, Mary Jo and Jeanette and Loretta. Thank you so much y'all for being here. Um, so sometimes we do really complicated things here uh, tonight and on Wednesday nights and sometimes we do whimsical things and sometimes we do easy things and tonight is an easy thing and we are going to start and I've only done this much right here. We've, we're gonna, I started this just so I could take a picture and put it on Instagram and Facebook today so I could guide everybody over here and let them know what we're doing tonight. Um, hello, Looking Glass Lane, thank you so much. Um, Jan from Greece, hi Jan. Hello, Brenda, um, doing great, just got back from two days. Oh my gosh, free condo right on the beach. Life must be tough, Nina. Life is tough for you. <laughs> Nina has a bunch of furniture. You need to make your way to Texas, girlfriend. Nina's got a bunch of furniture here in my shop. <coughs> I'm just messing with you. Hey, Krista. So uh, let's see. Um, what was I telling y'all? Oh, if you'll just push that share button, that would be awesome because this is um, definitely something that people I don't think will shy away from. Those that are looking for uh, the super, super basics, we're not even priming. We, all we did is clean. So let's get started. Uh, let me tell you real quick, this piece, before we get started, this piece, I don't know if you saw my post, but this, for, this is a shout out to any of you who are business owners or especially online business owners, not for, uh, not necessarily for you brick and mortars that actually like face to face get to meet your people. But for anyone on here that is running, whether it's a hobby or a full blown, full blown business online, uh, furniture painting, anything really for that matter, it doesn't have to be furniture painting. Let me give you a little history of this piece. I've been doing online furniture painting for about uh, 11 years, I guess about 11 years. Uh, started out on Etsy long, long, long time ago. Had an Etsy shop, pages and pages and pages of Etsy painted furniture for years. I don't have one anymore, but um, I did that forever. And I sold painted furniture uh, to clients, mostly on the East Coast. I'm in Texas, mostly on the East Coast. They paid as much to ship their furniture as they did for the furniture. So, uh, mostly New York, lots and lots of New York, uh, lots of New Jersey, um, crazy, just crazy. I, I couldn't get any clients in Texas. I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, where are all my Texas people? I couldn't figure it out. This went on for years, several years. Lo and behold, I get a client on, through Etsy who orders a dresser, tells me what she wants. All my work is always custom. 99% of my work is custom work. 
So she tells me what she wants, what she's looking for. And I said, great, can I, I need to get you a shipping quote. Can I, can you give me your zip code? It was the San Antonio zip code. And I was like, what? You're in San Antonio? So she was my first San Antonio customer, our first Texas customer ever, um, ever. And she lives no more than 10 minutes from my house. We have become friends over the years. This was probably about, uh, well, she was pregnant with her daughter, so maybe 10 years ago. Um, she, uh, I did her daughter's dresser. I've now done, I don't know, multiple pieces of furniture for her. And so this piece has come back to me. So this is a piece that I painted for her. This was the original finish. These were the original hardware, the not original. I painted them, they were brass and then we, we did them this black color. So it's like, I don't even know what you call this co color, like a mocha with a dark glaze. So I probably did this about six years ago for her. It's one of the many pieces that I've done. Um, this was the hardware. So, and this little piece right here, little nightstand. So she had one on one side of her bed and one on the other side of her bed in her master bedroom. So now she's moving and she's going to give these to her daughter that was got the first piece from me. Isn't that crazy? Uh, the piece that I painted for her first, for her nursery. Uh, and they're gonna go in her room and her daughter wants solid black. Hello, Karen from Alberta. Uh, both Karens, Karen from San Diego and Karen from Alberta. So anyway, just a the reason I, I wanted to tell y'all that little story is because, um, you know what, just don't, don't stop trying. Don't ever give up and think because that, that single client, her as a client in my hometown, is where my hometown business took off. She knew a lot of people. Um, she's a great, great uh, advocate for me. Like she's like super, super fan. Um, I've gotten a lot of business through her over the years. So that's how it started and then it just finally spread. So it, her name's Carrie and it took Carrie to find me on Etsy and she had no idea I was in Texas and I had no idea she was in Texas and I'd waited a really long time to finally get a Texas client uh, and it was a San Antonio client. So anyway, this is that piece and uh, how good does it feel to get a piece back and it looks as good as the day she took it away. Looks amazing. So um, anyway, we're gonna start painting. So all I did was I cleaned this piece with white lightning. Uh, that's all I did. It does not need to be primed. I was the one who painted it. I know what it was painted with and I don't need to prime it. Plus I'm going black. It, I, it cleaned up beautifully and we're going black so we don't need to prime it. So I cleaned it with white lightning, sprayed it down really well with white lightning, wiped it down with a rag, resprayed it with water because you always wanna do one coat of water after you do white lightning. So resprayed it with a coat of water. I give them a shower. I call it a furniture shower. Uh, resprayed it with just plain water and wiped it down again and I started painting. That's it. So all I did was remove the hardware and um, we're gonna start painting. Now normally on a piece that's flat like this, I'm gonna turn my back to you guys, but I have, uh, I have a um, microphone on. So I do have my water bottle right here. This is a water bottle. My Mr. Bottle is broken and Dixie, Dixie Bell's still out. So um, I just usually kind of missed it a little bit. This is my first coat. My brush is dry. I'm using a Dixie Bell mini brush. It's one of my mini, mini brushes right here. Uh, if you decided to prime, would you, this is a great time to ask questions, you guys, too. Um, if you decided to prime, would you sand back first or just prime straight over the top? I would prime straight over the top. And why would you wanna prime over this, Sarah? I'm just curious. I'm gonna turn my back and probably won't see your answer, but I'm curious uh, why you would want to prime over it. Just maybe if you weren't sure what was there, uh, or if you were going super light, maybe you were gonna go with a white, you weren't sure what was underneath, possibly. Um, those are the reasons that, that Sarah might want to prime. That's a, a, good, a good conversation to have. Do y'all know that every Friday morning I do, um, I, don't, I know we're on Facebook right now, but do y'all know if you're on Instagram, every Friday morning I go live on Dixie Bell's Instagram page and we call it Frequently Asked Questions Friday. Uh, it's at 9.45, every morning, 9.45. And it's no big deal if you can't catch that live because it's stored on their uh, Instagram page as uh, an IGTV. So if you just go to Instagram and you pull up the IGTV, you'll see the Frequently Asked Fridays there. And it's questions that people ask all the time that are very, very common questions that they uh, get asked a lot, or we all get asked a lot. And 
we tackle that there. So this is what I'm doing. A really, really thin coat. I've only done one coat over there. So this is a, a super thin coat, just kind of taking it over the middle. Uh, and normally if I weren't live, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these drawers open a little bit and paint them with you. But normally I would go ahead and take these drawers out. Now you notice that a lot of times now furniture painters are just painting with the drawers in and the doors in. We didn't used to do that. The reason we do more of that now is because a lot of us are doing, you know, the blending technique is so popular, uh, the water wash technique is so popular, and also artwork. So when you're doing artwork on a piece, you have to have your drawers in. Uh, when you're blending on a piece, you really need to keep your drawers in because you need to, you need to, uh, you need to be able to see the whole picture. You can't break it up. So see how I go up and down here? get in those cracks and crevices, but at the last second, I'll go ahead and take it from left to right. So my last stroke is left to right, which by the way, I'm only painting half because I already painted the other half earlier today. So that's that. We're gonna let this sit for just a minute. I'm gonna roll it around and we're gonna paint the side as well. Okay, while this first coat, first, actually I told y'all that was one coat over there. It's actually two coats over there. So I did a super, super thin coat on Oh, y'all seeing a reflection in the light? <laughs> Does she see it? Let's see what y'all are talking about. The top right is reflecting brown and white. The top right. You meaning over there? Let me move the camera. Let me move the camera. I hope I don't lose y'all. How's that? This is just the difference of, this is the color that was original. Y'all can see that. It's like a coffee color. And then I'm going black. So this is what it looks like when it's dry. This is dry caviar, and then this is the wet caviar. So you see the difference between when it's wet and when it's dry. And I can also pop open, where did that, um, hold on, where'd my little screwdriver go? Oh, here it is. Okay, I can also pop open this drawer. Well, no, you really can't see that very well. I was gonna say you could, um, let me paint this top up here for you. Okay, so my word of advice for y'all on this first coat is to keep it really, really thin and use as much water as possible. Go ahead and get it, you know, pretty wet, not so thin that you can't lay on any color, but go ahead and get it pretty wet so that you have less brush strokes. When you add water, it really, really self levels really well. And you just don't get the brush strokes. So I'm, go, I'm opening this. this. This dresser actually does not bump at all. And I'm just going ahead and running some paint, a bead of paint around the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close it back up. It doesn't touch, like it doesn't touch at all, which is really awesome. You know, if you, t if you paint antiques, you'll notice that uh, a lot of them rub in areas and it'll, you know, your paint rubs on and off. I hate that. This one's put together really, really well and it doesn't rub at all, which is part of the reason it was returned to me in such good condition, because it just does not. You know, if you go back over an area that was wet and you drag it a little bit, it's not a big deal. You just spray it back down with water. I just touch my little hole there, pull that out, and let's angle this down for you guys. See how I'd already done the top up there? Just a little bit of paint right here. Just run it over the top. So you can see how quick this is going. So we'll have this finished, the entire thing will be completely, uh, fully coated with a coat of black before this video is over. And push that back in, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna take y'all back out. Y'all go ahead and ask me any questions that you might have. Um, wow, the light really is reflecting on that black, isn't it? I didn't expect that. Uh, so let's see, let me go up here. Hi Tracy, yes, I need to keep my drawers on. <laughs> Did I say on? Oh my gosh. Uh, Tracy, my sister bought a large stand-up jewelry box, black and heavy, black wax. She has wiped a lot of it off, but she hates the black and wants to repaint. Yes, she can. Ah, I don't like this light, what is going on? What is going on with the light tonight? I'm turning some of these lights down. Uh, so what's your question, Nina? 
She has wiped a lot of it off, but she hates the black and wants to repaint. Yeah, she can repaint. She can repaint right over that. Uh, does she know what kind of wax was on there? That Did she buy it from, did she do it? Did she do the black wax, Nina? Or did she buy it from someone? As long as it's a water-based uh, wax, she can just, she can just paint right over that. I mean, she can really, as long as the wax is cured, she can paint over, straight over it with Dixie Belle without a problem. Um, better, better, better. Y'all are saying better. Uh, what can she do with all that wax? She's going to have to, she's going to have to rub, rub off as much of that. What product is it? Do you know what brand it is? How did your daughter's art turn out? We are actually sharing her art piece, which I loved, and thank you so much for asking about it. Um, okay, so while I'm while I'm talking, I'm gonna uh, keep painting. Uh, she, I had to bribe her to get her to pose with the picture. I wanted her in it. She's 13, so she's not real keen on me sharing her work uh, because her friends follow me. So I'm not allowed to share it on Facebook. I mean, on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but she told me I could share it with my with my with my uh, Facebook family, so I'll be sharing that on uh, what's today? Wednesday? It might be tomorrow. I might be sharing that tomorrow. So, do you see this, guys? Look how messy. Look, you can just do like this. When you're going with one color, you don't have to go up and down. Just get it on. Get your paint all over. Just get it on there got water on there already so the paint's moving around quickly don't overthink it if you're new don't overthink it just get some get a brush pick a color have yourself a spray bottle and just get to work just put it on now I'm gonna go smooth out all my brush strokes here in just a second I just want to get everything covered I want to show you how quickly you can do this. Now the hard part about this piece, guys, the most difficult part about this piece, we won't get to tonight, but it's gonna be the finish. It's gonna be the top coat. Black, white is a difficult, remember a couple weeks ago we did a solid white piece and I was like super bored with it. Uh, white is the most unforgiving paint color to paint. Black is the most unforgiving paint color to put a top coat on black and navy, charcoal gray, anything like that. Okay, so now I'm just going back, spritzing a little bit, and I'm just moving my brush strokes down, just like this. All one direction, smoothing it out. It's a little bit of, a uh, little bit of water. Getting a good, good coverage here. This is our first coat. And I always go left to right on these trim pieces up and down this is left to right up here just like that and we'll let this dry get in here and I'll we'll spin it around and we'll do the other side just like this solid colors are a breeze especially on a good quality clean piece of furniture okay um let's see Good, you got your paint at Ruth's. That's awesome, Diane. Um, oh, I think I might be. This is Laurel. This color is caviar. Um, this color is caviar. Doug, Lisa, Terry, Terry. There's four names there. Uh, you can buy your paint at a local retailer or you can get the paint at uh, my link that I posted um, below this video. There should be a link there. And you can order it online and they will ship it to you. I've got this on casters. And I am just gonna flip this around and we're gonna put some black on this side as well, which has also already been cleaned. Um, let's see here. Good evening, Tracy. How's the grandson doing? April, thank you for asking. He's wonderful. Um, Nina, all I know to do is just uh, buff off as much as she possibly can and then I would use, uh, I'd use white lightning on it. See if that takes it off. That's what I would do. I mean, is it really that much? You should be able to just wipe it all down. And then just white lining it really well. And then paint it. She should be able to do that. Um, Jane. 
Mineral spirits may remove the wax for her. Yeah, if it's like super, super built up, if it's just too much to just sort of wipe away, I guess you are going to need to use something that's going to cut through that. Send me a picture. Send me a picture of it. Uh, will there be time to look t look at spoons for color, Carol? Random question, I know. I'd like to see barn red, rustic red, and daisy if that's possible. Yes. Actually, Carol, can you follow me over onto my page? Let's do that on uh, over on my page. I go from here to my page. I go live there, and we can do that. I feel a little more relaxed just sitting and talking about color um, over there because my goal tonight was really to get every inch of this covered so that anyone that is, um, you know, a little bit nervous about about painting for the first time will see that it, it really is so easy and you don't have to be all particular. You can just be, you can be sloppy. You can go in a bunch of different directions. Just make sure that you go back and clean up your brush strokes in one direction before the paint starts to set up. And if the paint does start to set up, not a big deal because it reactivates beautifully with water. So, um, that's not a problem. Uh, if I repaint a piece with decoupage. Uh, <laughs> Sue. So Sue's asking if she's going to repaint a piece that she decoupaged. Um, gosh, Sue, I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't in, at some time or another painted over a decoupage. It's really no different than painting over, you know, textured wallpaper or something like that. I mean, as long as the paper is adhered really well and protected uh, really well, <laughs> It's really okay. Um, I guess, is it yours? I mean, it may give you a little bit of a textured look. It's, it's, it's really, that's just really your call. It really is. But the best way to remove the decoupage is just going to be a good, a good sanding. Um, how do you correct the drawers rubbing on antique pieces? Oh my gosh, Rhonda. If I knew the answer to that, I would be a millionaire. I have a buffet that is veneer that I want to paint. I mean, we have tried. Sometimes I've been, sometimes we're successful and sometimes not. Um, more not than yes. Uh, Matt has gone in and done lifts. You know, he's, uh, sometimes the little, the tracks will have lost uh, like a little peg uh, or the tracks are, are uh, loose and he has to re-glue. We've even ordered tracks for clients that, you know, had like a family heirloom piece that they wanted worked out. Um, I don't know, does anyone have any tips for that? Anyone real into uh, the repair of furniture? Because that is my least favorite thing to do. I can't stand to fix a piece of furniture. I just don't have the patience for it. I just want to get the furniture and make it pretty. I mean, I've been known to put furniture in my house that the drawers weren't even functional, but it was so pretty to look at, and I just painted it pretty and then, you know, used it as a feature piece of furniture for a while. <laughs> Something to put books and lamps on, you know, that looked amazing, but the drawers didn't function. I have a little bit too much paint there, so I'm going to go across here. Sorry, the light is so reflective on this. I didn't know it was going to be like that. All right. So last time, just taking it up and down. This is an undercoat anyway, just real light, super light. Look at it. I mean, just I'm letting it like loose in my hand. It's just really light up and down. And now we have, with the exception of the very top, we have covered this entire piece except for the inside of this one leg down here. And I'm going to get that. So that is coat one. And I'm going to do coat two. And just so you know what the next step would be, uh, coat one is done. Uh, as long as it's not too humid in your area, usually the piece within about 20 minutes, you're able to put another coat on. Um, but we had some rain come through tonight, and we it's a little bit humid tonight. So after you finish your first coat, you want to make sure it's dry. Then you will do your second coat. I don't know what is up with my lighting tonight. I don't usually look like I'm glowing. Oh, there we go. That fixed it. Sometimes you just have to put your hand like that. Um, 
Then I'll go back and do a second coat and I will let that dry. And then when that finishes drying, I will let it dry overnight and I'm gonna come out here tomorrow and I'm gonna gator hide this entire piece because it's going in a, a young uh, tween in a tween's room uh, and her mom said she's kind of hard on furniture. So, uh, and then tonight over on my page, over on tracysfancy.com, uh, not tracysfancy.com, that's my website. Uh, over on Tracy's Fancy Facebook, I am gonna do this whole thing from start to finish over there. And it's same thing, black, 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 black. But I wanna show y'all the hardware, okay? So let's look at the hardware while my paint's drying. So this is what it looked like when I got it. And this is what we're doing with it. She wanted gold, so this is what we're doing. Now, it was already dark. And I probably could have just embellished it with gold, but instead I sprayed it with gold all over and then I used black caviar paint and I just covered the entire thing. So it sprayed gold and then I covered, while it, after it dried, I covered the whole thing with black paint with my, black, with my brush and then I just used a baby wipe and I just wiped it back. I wiped all the black paint off and so you did, I didn't have to use glaze, I didn't use decor wax. I didn't use besting wax, I just used the same paint. So when I said we're doing one piece with one brush and one color of paint, I really meant it. Like the whole piece, and then I even used the paint on the hardware, but I did introduce uh, some gold spray paint. So this is the difference between the two pieces of hardware. Um, this is what, what we're doing. So that's it, that's what it's gonna be. Uh, let's see. What, why would you use a trigger spray versus, oh no, I, Bridget, I'm probably way behind. I don't, I used to use trigger spray before everybody started using misters. This was a gift actually from someone and I, I used to be a big Jack Daniels drinker and I, I love this bottle. Uh, but my mister bottles are, 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 I dropped it and it broke. And Dixie Belle has been out of them and I don't want to order from anywhere else. So I'm just waiting until they get them back in stock. So I'm using my trigger sprayers again. But you know what? It's really not any, it's fine. The trigger sprayers work. I just need some water delivered onto the paint. I don't have to have a special mister. That special bottle isn't going to change the outlook of my piece. As a matter of fact, when I'm doing like big time water washes, I prefer the, the trigger sprayer because it delivers more water. So it gives me more of a water wash look. Uh, good question though. What does the term wax mean? Wait, what does the term wax mean? Is it in the paint? Oh, Linda. Okay, so maybe has someone already asked, answered you. Um, let me answer you. Wax, let me get it. Okay, let me get some wax for you. I'll be right back. This is wax right here. This is besting wax in black. This is a small jar. Um, this is what it looks like. It's black. So the difference between paint and wax, paint obviously paints your furniture. When when people start started doing paint painting with chalk mineral paints, um, they used wax to set it, to help it set. So they would use clear wax on everything, clear wax, and it helped it set. Then then people started putting like pigment into the clear wax and they realized that they could enhance the paint job by adding shadows and highlights and getting into you know like the carved areas and things like that so when you've got a black piece that's just flat like this you don't notice notice the carved areas as much but if you wax it or enhance it you see all the carvings a lot better than you do without it so they started making wax in a bunch of different colors and we no longer just use wax to set or cure the paint, we now use wax to enhance our the beauty of the project, to give it depth, does that make sense, detail, bring out the details, uh, and they make wax in all different colors. Um, and then Dixie Belle, uh, their, their products all work together, so I can paint a piece and then I can wax it and then I can top coat over it, even over the wax. I can, once this wax is cured, it takes about 72 hours. Then I can put a final top coat over everything. This piece doesn't need any wax. I'm top coating only. I'm gonna use a top coat called Gator Hide. Um, so I'm not gonna, this, this piece has nothing to do with wax. I'm not, I'm not using any wax at all on this piece. So I hope that that made sense. Um, can you paint right over a shiny oak table? Jennifer, you can. Um, it, it depends how shiny. Like if it's like 
the slick red brown from straight from the china factory type shiny that's like almost like glass that probably needs to either be scuffed back or you need to use slick stick slick stick primer for super slick surfaces then you can paint over it um if you're going with a dark color over an oak table you can just paint right over it if you're going with a light like a white or an off-white i would prime first with boss clear at least or boss white um, and then put your paint down because you don't want any of those wood tans to bleed through the light color paint. But yeah, you can just, you can paint right over it. Um, well, Janine's saying she might need slick stick. It really depends on how slick your piece is. Um, let's see. Uh, need more, but first I need to sell what I have. <laughs> Charmenta, I like your name. Um, the copper reflection might stir the whimsy in you. I, you know, I like this piece is going to be very classy and gorgeous, but oh, it's like such an open canvas with the curves and the Bombay. I would love to do more to it, but this is what she wanted. The, the, her little girl wanted a dresser from Pottery Barn, just a classic black with gold handles. But from that Emily and Merritt line, she was like, "Nope, I'm sending it to Tracy. She'll make it. She'll make it just as pretty." So, um, okay. I'm probably missing all, oh my gosh, I just saw how far away, how far I was on comments. Uh, so if you used a colored wax, it won't be a solid color coat of wax, like a clear wax does colored wax. Oh my goodness. Uh, like a clear wax. Does colored wax, even if applied evenly, does it make shading in the surface paint? Yes, it will change the color of your paint. No matter if you're using it to highlight or shadow or seal, you, it will change, the colored wax is gonna change the color of your paint, for sure. It's gonna change the, the tint of your paint or even the color of your paint. Oh, Amy, thank you for asking. I didn't even, I think I've only said it once. Tracy's Fancy, T-R-A-C-E-Y-S-F-A-N-C-Y. I don't know if Dixie Bell's on here, if they would share that link for me, that would be awesome. Uh, Tracy's Fancy, and um, my website is tracysfancy.com, and I write a blog every single week, and I have been for about seven or eight years. It's loaded. It has a search bar. You can search anything in that search bar that you want, and any project will come up. Um, oh, you are Debbie. Debbie's going to paint a chair. I just, I'm, I have another chair right, right there. I've got another one in the works. So business, do you give repeat clients a bit of a discount? on what they buy. Jeanette, that's a really good question, and honestly, I do. If I have a client like her where I've painted multiple pieces in her house, she's gonna get better pricing than just someone who comes to me brand new, for sure. Yep, I do. I have people who have done whole bedroom sets for every single room in their house, and they for sure get, they do, they get a better deal. I don't know how you can. not So that's a good question, Jeanette. Um, if it's shiny, slick, and red, would you use boss first and then slick stick or just one of the two? I would use slick stick first. If it's shiny, slick stick first. Got to break the shine. And then if it's super bold red, then you need to use boss white if you're wanting to go with a light color of paint. Okay? Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I am so happy that you could see how quickly we did this Bombay chest all over. Uh, all over. It just needs one more coat of paint and then I'm going to let it cure for 24 hours and then I'm going to put gator hide on it. I'll probably do three thin coats of gator hide and I'll probably do some of those live on my Facebook page. If you want to uh, keep an eye out, go follow me. Make sure that you do the little things so that when I go live you get a notification um, because gator hide is a little bit of a struggle for people and I use the applicator pads and a cool whip lid because I'm resourceful like that and uh, I'll show you my technique for doing it over black it's a complicated finish but I think I've I think I broke it down it's pretty simple with good success Dixie Bell thank you for having me I appreciate every single one of y'all for being here I will see y'all next Wednesday hopefully with something a little more interesting but you know we have to take it back down to basics every once in a while because like you see we've got some brand new people on here and sometimes the complicated whimsy stuff scares them off so um I was happy to do this tonight. Thanks y'all so much, and I'll see some of y'all over on my page, okay? Talk to you soon. Have a good night. Bye-bye.